Okay, so today we are going to make some bultong. Uh, when I first started making bultong, um, I ended up throwing a few batches away. It's obviously hugely wasteful. Um, it's because I didn't really know what I was doing, so I thought I'd do a little tutorial that won't take too long and show you the basics, and you'll make really good bultong from the start. So, here we go. Okay, we're going to start off with the spicing. First off, I would highly recommend um, buying commercial spicing to start. Um, making it um, the traditional way is fabulous, but I'd suggest you do that um, after you've had a few goes of using commercial spice, and the commercial spice does work well. Okay, so first off, you get two different types of commercial spice. You get a darker spice, um, like this one, okay, so that that is... Um, Freddie Hirsch's uh, Hunter's Bultong. It's a very popular Bultong spice. Um, a very similar one is uh, Crown National um, Safari Spice. Um, also, uh, you use them in the same quantities. It's uh, uh, 40 grams to 50 grams per a kilo of meat. Then you get um, what I call like a more traditional style um, spice and that's basically salt, pepper and coriander seed um, and that's a lot of uh, Biltong uh, manufa spice manufacturers will call that a traditional spice or um, an aromatic spice, use those kind of words but essentially those are the two different types right so that's my mix of spice there as I said it was for um, 3.5 kilos um, my spices come up to a weight of 140 grams, which is about 40 grams per kilo of spice. But that's bearing in mind, I've got different mixes. For your first batch, I'd highly recommend just buying a dark um, mix of Bultong spice, such as the um, Freddie Hirsch Hunter's Bultong spice like that. Measuring out 45 grams per kilo and using it like that and don't deviate from that that works really well okay so now to this this part you can add to your Freddie Hirsch mix this is what I'm going to do I'm going to add um, some brown sugar to that mix and I'm going to add um, some nutmeg to that mix and that's going to make your bultong so much better than everybody else's right I've grated uh, some nutmeg fresh nutmeg um, into my uh, pestle and mortar and then I've given it a quick grind as well so it's now a real fine powder so I'm looking to do maybe I'll use a two and a half mil scoop and just grab some of that and make it half flat-ish and we're going to do one of those for every kilo of meat we got there so, um, Okay, and to that I'm then going to do, I'm going to add to that uh, brown sugar and I'm going to use um, maybe 10 ml of brown sugar uh, per kilo. So again, with the measuring spoon, the brown sugar goes in there too. Okay, so those are my spices all broken down now. Um, a lot of people will at this stage uh, toast some coriander and then put it in here. And that is actually quite a good idea. I quite like that myself. But for simplicity reasons, we're not doing that today. We're just sticking with the main batch of uh, spices. Okay. Right, now obviously the grain on this runs this way. And so that is how we're going to carve the steaks out. Uh, you've always got to carve with the, whatever piece of meat you're using. You always have to carve with the steak, with, with it along the grain. Um, also, um, I'm going to be cutting these about two two and a half centimeters thick so we should uh, turn this meat over and put it um, fat or skin side down and cut from the other side uh, that way it'll get nice even steaks okay so you can see it's kind of a bit of steak that I've got like that and they're all pretty much even like that okay so uh, now I've got a couple of Pyrex dishes um, this has got about a centimetre of vinegar in it um, and that's what we're going to bathe the uh, meat in. The meat's got to be completely covered in the vinegar because that will uh, raise the pH balance of the um, 
of the meat and therefore make um, uh, it a lot more difficult for um, un undesirables to grow and like mold and stuff you know it, 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 and also obviously uh, this is gonna help with the flavoring as well um, vinegar is a traditional part of bultong so it's simple enough just go through your meat like that just make sure it's completely covered all the sides it's washed over nicely go like that okay at this stage it's just important to note that I do use uh, Pyrex dishes for this for a reason because if you use metallic dishes you it will discolor the meat and also it will it, it um, the meat will not taste right it'll have a funny taste but it's because it's to do with the interaction of the vinegar and the iron and I, I don't know I, just don't do it <laughs> it's simple okay uh, so now we're gonna spice the meat and it's pretty much a simple case of grabbing a piece of the meat throwing that around throwing some of the spice on and just going over like so and then we're just gonna stack them up put a bit more on there and then the next piece Right, so that's my bolton spiced. Um, I am gonna I'm gonna put this in the fridge for um, about uh, 10, 12 hours. Then I'm going to uh, relay it so that all the top pieces go to the bottom and all the bottom pieces go to the top. I won't take it out of the brine that will form. There will be a brine that forms. Um, that's the salt pulling the moisture out the meat. And it's but it's interacting with the vinegar and all of that and that is basically your curing agent so I'm not going to pull the brine out of that the, the meat must soak in that brine but it must give an, give an even spread of that and that's why I'm moving the top meat to the bottom and the bottom meat to the top after 12 hours right that's the silver side being marinating with those spices for 24 hours and so I basically turned all the meat and that and uh, stacked it back up again um, and now it's time to hang just incidentally you can hang about uh, five kilos in that it's a little bit of a squeeze but you can do that but uh, there's only three point uh, three and a half kilos so it shouldn't be a problem for us So after <coughs> four days, uh, the bultong's uh, ready. This is going to be still quite moist bultong, but that's the way I like it. Um, as you can maybe see from this piece, I have been hacking a bit at it, but it's really good. Um, so I'm going to slice this up now, and I'll show you that now. So this is a slice I picked up from uh, Lakeland here in the UK um, and it's great for slicing up bultong. It's not a brilliant slicer but it's more than adequate for doing the job. I'll show you now. Okay, I'm going to adjust it to maybe 3-4 mil thick. And that's my bultong. So that's my bultong all sliced up. Um, but now I'm going to add an additional spice. I mean, this is really nice like it is, but I quite like a little peri peri kick. So this is what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to um, now do a double seasoning. I've got um, on the right here, this is chili flakes. Or not chili flakes, this is the Crown National uh, Chili Bite seasoning. 
So I've just put some in here, maybe a, a tablespoon or two tablespoons. And I'm going to do this in stages. I'm just going to grind this down. Okay, that should be enough. And now I'm going to lightly just dust this over and mix it in. And this is really, really nice. It just lifts the flavor of the biltong. It gives it um, a slightly more spicy flavor and it's just fantastic doing a double seasoning like this and I'd highly recommend it. Um, especially if you like your biltong uh, moist. Man, that is good. Thanks for watching.